Hey guys, it's the Metal Blade 5, and welcome back to another Metal Blade Fury. For today's Fury, I have an idea that is absolutely ridiculous. I don't think it will happen, but the idea is so crazy that I had to make a Fury on it. I wanted to do a Metroid-related Fury, but couldn't think of any ideas, but thanks to Game Explained uploading a video on the possibility that Metroid Prime Federation Force is hitting out of Metroid Prime 4, this random idea popped into my head, which as I said before, is ridiculous. As you can tell from me in the title, this theory is about Silux. Silux's first appearance was in Metroid Prime Hunters for the DS, where he was one of the bounty hunter bosses in the game, and for some reason he became very popular afterwards. All that is known about Silux is that he harbors an intense hatred for the Galactic Federation and to Samus for assisting them in the past. Then, in the special ending of Metroid Prime 3, which is earned by getting 100% completion, a mysterious spaceship is shown following Samus. This ship is actually the Delano 7, which is Silux's ship from Hunters. Now, for Game Explains video on Federation Force, I will need to talk about spoilers, so if you don't want the game spoiled for you, then skip to the time on screen now. In Federation Force, you can find a Metroid egg near the end of the game, and if you take this egg with you, then you will unlock a secret ending. This ending is shown in the first person view of an unknown character in the Galactic Federation headquarters who sneaks into the room with the Metroid egg and causes it to hatch. Then, the camera zooms out which allows us to see the character's right arm. And from this, it appears that this character is most likely Silux. All of this is possibly hinting at a Metroid Prime 4 where Silux will be the main antagonist. But who exactly is Silux? Now, his entire identity is shrouded in mystery and there is very little information about him. But when watching Game Explain's video, I made a brief joke to myself about who Silex could be, and it hit me. But in order to understand where my train of thought is going, we're basically going to go on a longer version of those Star Trek fought route sections from Ace Attorney, as I explain who I think Silex is based on my crazy idea and why. So first off, we have to start with the only thing we know about Silex, being that he hates the Galactic Federation and Samus but we don't know his reason why. Now, Silux hates Samus due to the fact that she's assisted the Galactic Federation in the past, but as seen in the other M, Samus used to be a member of the Galactic Federation, but then quit after an incident to become a bounty hunter. I think that it's highly plausible that Silux's hatred for Samus comes from the fact that she used to be a member when it mentions her assisting them in the past. But still, what does this have to do with Silux's identity? Well, when I first heard of Silux hating the Galactic Federation, I immediately assumed that he could have also been a member of the Galactic Federation, but something happened to make him hate them, and with Samus previously being part of the Federation, that would help link his hatred for her as well, plus it creates a bit of a parallel between the stories of Samus and Silux. Now, I can already hear some of you hardcore Metro fans present the argument that Silux might not be human, and all Galactic Federation members are human. Well, not only is Silux humanoid, but if we look at his hand when using his weapon, the shock coil, it's very human-like, which highly suggests that Silux is human. Also, in Hunters, it's also mentioned that Silux stole and used Federation gear and armor. Not only is this human in shape, which further supports this, but how would Silux know how to use Federation equipment if he already had experience using it before? And in Nintendo Power, it even stated that Silex's technology is suspiciously similar to a stolen Federation prototype. Now, there is one other point being that in the opening of Hunters, Silex is shown on a planet called Silosis, which some suggest may be his homeworld. However, this is never stated, and others have argued that this could have been where he found his suit, ship, and weapons. Also, Silux's reasoning for being on Silosis in the opening was most likely due to the Galactic Federation being there in order to enact his revenge. Now that we've shown the high probability that Silux could have been a member of the Galactic Federation, you're probably wondering, well this must be a completely new character. Out of all the Galactic Federation troops in the series, none of them show any distaste towards the Federation and Samus, but what have I told you? There is one established character in the Metroid universe that fits the criteria, and does have a potential reason for hating Samus and the Federation. And it's probably not who you think it is. When I was thinking to myself about Silux possibly being a former Galactic Federation soldier, that was when I made that joke to myself, which made me come up with this whole theory. That joke was Adam Malkovich being Silux. No, Adam is not Silux, but Adam led me to the idea I have now. 
The reason why Adam can't be Silox is, for one, being the fact that Adam doesn't hate Samus, but more importantly being that he's still a member of the Galactic Federation in Other M. This also applies to all the other Galactic Federation solos seen in Other M, including Anthony. Remember me? And the same goes for the Deleter, whose identity remains a mystery, since if that was Silox, then he would be using his own suit and weapons rather than pretending to be part of the squad. Also, in every other Metroid game, the Galactic Federation have played either a pretty minor role or a backseat role, except for Prime 3, which is after Silox's debut. This means that we have to look into the past to find out who Silox could be, and luckily for us, Samus has numerous flashbacks throughout Other M about her days in training as a Galactic Federation soldier, which helps ties the connection that Silex makes with her in the Federation. The most important of all of Samus' flashbacks in Other M is to that incident I mentioned earlier, which caused her to leave the Federation. This incident involved a Federation squad that Samus was in, which was being commanded by Adam to rescue a ship containing over 300 people due to their space station being at risk of exploding. Or at least that's what I got from the scene. They're not exactly clear on what the mission was. In order to stop the station from exploding, Adam's younger brother Ian was sent in to do something on a computer. However, the space station's engines began to overheat, meaning that it was going to explode. However, Adam gave the order to the rest of the squad to unlock the ship of people from the space station, and despite Samus pleading for Adam to give the order to rescue Ian, Adam did nothing about it, and Samus didn't do anything because to her, Adam's authorization is the word of God for some stupid reason. So as a result, Ian was left behind on the exploding station and presumed dead. I'm pretty sure you're starting to put the pieces together. That's right. My crazy idea is that I believe that Silex's true identity is Ian Malkovich. But there is one problem with this claim being the fact that Ian is kind of dead. Well, I have a way around that. I think that there might have been a possibility that Ian somehow survived the explosion. When looking at the cutscene, you see that Ian was wearing a Galactic Federation suit as the station exploded, and there have been instances in which these suits have shown to be very durable. Granted, it's inconsistent throughout the series, but it presents the possibility that Ian's suit may have absorbed a lot of the explosion's force. Now, I know that some people are going to bring up that in Other M, spoiler alert, Adam died by blowing himself up inside a container full of Metroid clones, but he wasn't wearing his helmet in that scene, so that might have played a large factor. Also, we never see where exactly Ian was in the space station, so he could have been in one of the outer areas where the blast would have been less severe. And since there are Metroid characters who have survived explosions like Ridley and Kraid, I don't think it's too out there to say Ian could have survived the station exploding. There's also the fact that the station was also orbiting a nearby planet, so if Ian did survive, he could have fallen to this planet which may have had lighter gravity or a safe landing place, since we know nothing about this planet, which could have been where he found Silex's weapons and the Delano 7 which he could have used to upgrade his suit to what it is now. There's also the other major factor being that Ian is the only character in the Metroid series that fits the criteria to be Silux. He was a Galactic Federation soldier and Adam's brother, so he likely had a lot of experience and possessed great knowledge of the Federation's technology. But also, Adam leaving him behind makes Ian the most plausible Galactic Federation soldier to hold a grudge against the Federation, since he was left to die, and since Samus was on that mission as well, he would likely associate that with her as well, especially since every single job Samus is hired to do in the Metroid series is by the Galactic Federation, which would still make Silux associate her with them. As some call me Johnny said in his Metroid Prime 3 review, I think, Samus gets all her work from the Galactic Federation, so she might as well just be an employee there. Also, in Samus' flashback to Ian's death, it is implied that Samus and Ian were close in some way, so the fact that his own brother didn't save him, and Samus didn't try either, would make Ian feel betrayed if he survived, which would most likely develop into a deep hatred towards the Galactic Federation, which his brother was so dedicated to, and Samus due to failing to save him, making Ian... Silux. And that's it for probably the craziest theory I have ever thought of, even with the other ones I have planned in the future. Of course, I think the chances of this actually happening to be very slim, since if Silux's identity was ever revealed, 
they would probably make it an original character rather than a very minor character from the game the majority of Nintendo fans hate. But like I said before, I think that out of all the existing characters in the Metroid series, Ian fits the bill to be Silox. And as I say at the end of all these theories, they're just theories and not facts, so don't pull a game theory fan on me. Also, I have another theory planned soon, ish, and it will be very fitting for what month it will be.